Does your aim look like this? I'm a two-time Call of Duty World Champion. Now I'm trying to get your aim like that. And we're going to begin with tip number one, which is recoil control. And there's a good way to do this. What you need to do is find a wall and shoot your gun without trying to control the recoil. You're going to sort of notice the pattern. This basically goes up and slightly to the left, right, left. So to practice this, you're going to want to pull down a little bit and slightly to the left or even the right. So it's going to look something like this. Now, this isn't perfect, but you can see I'm pretty much on target. If that was an enemy there, then I would take him out, especially with aim assist. But enough with the aim assist talk. What you're going to want to do is while you're shooting people and running around the map and trying to aim at your targets, you're going to hold down. You're going to pull down your aim slightly. And even I like to pull it slightly to the left because that's usually where the recoil goes more towards. So I'm going to pull down slightly and aim to the left. And this is going to allow me to be more on target and, of course, hit my shots very precisely. This does take some practice, but understanding the recoil control and the recoil patterns is very, very important to have really good aim. It takes a lot of a lot of reps, but what you want to do is run around the map and make sure you're pulling down. And every gun does have different recoil patterns. Some guns have, you know, worse recoil control. Some guns go more to the left or more to the right. And that's up to you to try to understand the recoil pattern and then do your best to basically control it so you can shoot very straight just like this. And with that being said, tip number two is going to be centering. And what centering basically means is when you're maneuvering around the map, you're going to want to be centering on the right areas of the map. That way, when you aim in, you can just snap on people and shoot them very easily. This is something all the pro players do. And maybe you can notice it in games like CSGO where they're centering perfectly where their enemy is going to be. But this is something you want to apply in Call of Duty. This is going to take your game to the next level and even help your aim drastically. Why? Because one, if I'm centering around the map and I'm centering like this, as soon as I see my target, I'm basically all him. All I have to do now, if I'm centering like this, is aim in and shoot, correct? And centering is something you do have to get better at and you have to be mindful of. It's a muscle memory. You got you to gotta train that muscle. That's all it really is. So what you want to do is when you're maneuvering around the map and you're, you know, playing whatever map it may be, you always want to center where your opponent may be. I'm going to use this L plane as a prime example. When I'm maneuvering and moving up this plane, I'm centering right here. And as soon as I cut to left, I'm going to be centering at the door. You're not going to be watching me, you know, potentially looking on the looking at the floor, centering on the box. I'm centering where my opponent may be just like this. I slide center again. I go from left to right as I'm maneuvering. Always around the map and I'm moving, centering. Centering reminded me, I hear shots to my left, center. Slide cancel out, challenge, center here, jump center, center, center. You see how I'm like centering high on the head glitch? That's another thing. Depending on the height and the terrain on the map, it may be different. Sometimes you center lower, sometimes you center higher. So right here, I come around, I'm going to center here and I'm going to center high. A little bit more towards the middle, a little bit slightly higher because I'm not going to center here on the floor, correct? So this is something you have to get better at. And this is something all the pro players do. And you're wondering, like, how are they so snappy? You know, you see them running around the map. There's like snap, snap. And a big part of that is because they have extremely good centering. And you will pick up on that. Go watch some pro players play Modern Warfare 3. You're going to be like, wow, this centering is amazing. If they see, if they think someone's here, they're going like this. They're coming around the map centering like this. You understand? They're not going to be centering. They're not going to be centering like this and then center late. That's how you get killed. Always centering. Always centering. Come around the corner, centered. You're ready for the gunfight. You're ready to snap and hit your shots. This will take your game to the next level. Now, well, not only will it improve your aim, but it will help you get a lot more kills and you get caught off guard a lot less. Tip number three, rotational aim assist. And this is shout out to all my controller players because this is a big one. Aim assist is kind of broken, but rotational aim assist, it makes it even better. So basically, when I'm shooting, I always use both my sticks. I strafe left and right, strafe backwards, and I'm always aiming at the same time. That way, I pull better aim assist. And I'm going to show you a quick example. I'm not going to move my right stick at all. I'm just moving back and forth to left. You see how the aim assist is pulling a little bit towards him? And all I have to do is aim and shoot. And that's just me using my left stick. So you get that extra little aim assist when you use that left stick. Sometimes people say that you want to strafe left and right. You want to play maybe like strafe backwards a little bit diagonally. And this is going to help you get some really good rotational aim assist. And this is going to allow you to get that very, very, very sticky aim assist, which obviously in the end is going to help you improve your aim. So that's something you got to get better at. 
So when I'm running around the map, I always, always, no matter what I'm playing, I always use both sticks. I always strafe left and right. And if I'm on a head glitch, you know, let's say, for example, right here, I'm still strafing left and right. I can go back and forth like this. This also makes me a harder target. But on top of it, like, I'm just ready to pull that extra aim assist. You see? Just ready. No matter if I'm a head glitch or if I'm not on a head glitch. So again, to make it clear, rotational aim assist. It's basically using both sticks when you shoot your gun. You don't want to stand still and just use your right stick only. Sometimes it'll be fine, and sometimes you won't get that extra sticky aim assist, and you'll probably miss a little bit, or it's going to be a lot harder to hit your shots. So something you have to do is use both sticks. Don't be afraid to have two. And whether the gun strafes or not, left, right, left, right. You're strafing. You're using that rotational aim assist while you're shooting that gun. You're going to notice a big difference in your aim. Left, right, strafe. Left, right, strafe. Come on, with me. Left, right. Get that rotational aim assist, baby. Get that super sticky aim assist. It's OP. And that brings me to tip number four. And even though this is later in the video, I think it's one of the most important. No matter how good you are, you can be one of the best players in the world. If you have very, very bad and horrible settings, it can drastically affect your aim. And it's probably going to make you a worse player. So we're going to talk briefly about the best controller settings and aiming settings in general. First, we're going to be talking about dead zone inputs. Now, obviously, your right stick is your aiming stick, which is the most important one that we're going to be talking about. I personally use two on my right stick minimum. This is almost zero, but basically I get more control of my stick. Now, this does take some practice. The, the minimum I would recommend is try to stay at five. So you have that default. If you go too high, yes, it helps with stick drift, but it's going to affect your aim in a negative way. So you kind of want to stick around the five, which is default, or if you can lower it just a little bit and get used to it, it will help you hit even better shots. On top of it, don't touch the right stick max. Leave it at 99. Next, we're going to be talking about the sensitivity. So for horizontal and vertical, I play on 6.6 six on both. Now, this is something to understand. A lot of pro players play on this sensitivity. Why? It's one of the most consistent. It's fast, but at the same time, it's not too slow. So it allows you to get the job done. Majority players played on the sensitivity. Five is kind of too slow. Seven or eight starts to become a little fast. Yes, you can play on like 7, 8. I wouldn't recommend anything higher than 8, honestly. But 6, 6 is a very, very good and comfortable spot, especially if you're struggling with your aim. I really like, recommend 6, 6, 1. Next, make sure to put your aim response curve type on dynamic. This setting is amazing, and it's been in Call of Duty for the past couple years. 97% of pro players use this setting, and it's for a big reason. This is what you see when people are snapping. Dynamic gives you that snap ability of just be able to, you know, turn your stick around, be precise, and still snap on people. So dynamic is a pretty much a must. I highly recommend it. And another thing I want to talk about is your aim assist type. Now, I personally like default. Black Ops has gotten nerfed in the past. It still feels a little off to me. If you want, you could try Black Ops and it may feel better for you. But I recommend either default or black ops. Personally, I recommend just staying on default. But if you like black ops, then use black ops. These settings alone should really help you with your aim and give you that, for example, like I said, snap ability with dynamic and really help you be more precise. But a little bit of practice, you're almost there. And now for tip number five, which is also very important. Go to private match, create a private match. Next, go to game setup, change from TDM to free for all. You can do any map, but you probably want a smaller map like Scrapyard. Then change the game rules. You can put this up to 20, 30 minutes. I think it's a healthy time. Let's say 20 minutes. You can put the score limit to like 200. Then go to the team section and make sure radar always on is on constant. Next, to add bots, you want to go to this plus sign here on the right. And then you can put as many bots as you want. You probably don't want to go too crazy. You know, like 9 or 10 probably. If you include yourself like 9... You can leave them on recruit because dumb shooting back is not the biggest thing right now. And then you want to practice everything I just told you about on the map. Shooting bots is going to be one of the best ways because this is going to give you the most reps. Basically what this is practicing everything I just told you. And a lot of it is just muscle memory. So what are we going to do now? You're going to get the recoil control down. You're going to understand how it recoils. You're going to understand, okay, I got to pull down a little bit. You got to get that in your brain. Pull that, pull down a little bit. Understand the recoil pattern. How are you going to control the recoil? Next, something you can work on as well is your centering. So as you're shooting and running around the map and understanding, hey, I got to pull down my recoil. I got to control the recoil more. I'm also going to be centering. You can also see the pings on the mini map in the top left. So you can kind of see where people are coming from. You can practice that centering. You see? 
So when you're moving around the map, make sure to center. Practice your centering. It's a big muscle memory thing. Center around. Try to stay. Try to stay in the middle of your screen. If you're gonna, if you're gonna push up to the plane. You center higher. You center lower. Center in the middle. And you constantly just work on that centering. And as you're shooting the bots as well, use both sticks. Left, right, left, right. Use both sticks. Those are the biggest three things that you can work on and get very good at and very quickly if you just do it a lot. So playing these bots, you know, for 20, 30 minutes a day, even aside from like multiplayer and just remembering those three things I taught you and told you and just apply them to your game with the right settings. It's going to make a huge difference in your aim and you're probably going to get a lot better. Huh, you might get as good as me. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If this helped in any way, then make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing a lot more of these. I hope you guys have a fantastic day.